Hello, I'm meteorologist Trisha Palmer from the National Weather Service. Welcome to the weekly weather briefing for Thursday, November 21st, 2013. Let's start off by taking a look at the weather map from 8 a.m. this morning. The satellite image here is an infrared image which measures the temperature of the clouds. The colors indicate cooler and thus higher clouds. Across Georgia, the first feature of note is what we call the wedge, a ridge of cool, high pressure extending down the eastern seaboard. That's bringing cloudy and cool conditions to the region today, but you can see from the gray color of the clouds that they are warm clouds, which means they are low in the atmosphere. We may see some brief drizzle or light rain today or tonight as well. So let's take a look at the first part of the forecast. We have a cold front that's expected to push into the state Friday evening and Saturday. The cold front will approach the state Friday evening, pushing across the area during the day on Saturday. The images here compare our two main models, the GFS on the left and the ECMWF on the right, valid at 7 p.m. Friday evening as the rainfall is just beginning to enter northwest Georgia. As the front pushes through, the area of rainfall will diminish. These two images are valid at 1 p.m. Saturday afternoon, and you can see that the ECMWF on the right is the only model with any lingering rain across the state, and even then is generally less than 0.05 inches, less than a tenth. Generally, we are expecting only light rainfall amounts, less than a quarter of an inch, with the highest amounts in northwest Georgia. Thunderstorms are not expected with this front due to the rapid weakening and lack of instability. The big story with the weekend front will be the significant cool down behind it. We're expecting highs on Sunday to be 10 to 15 degrees colder than those on Saturday, with the entire area experiencing below freezing temperatures by Monday morning. As we approach Thanksgiving, another front will approach the area. There is a lot of uncertainty associated with the timing and amounts of precipitation with this front, so I'll show you again the comparison between the GFS on the left and the ECMWF on the right. The images above are valid around midnight Tuesday morning and show the system as it approaches from the Gulf. The most rain is expected between Tuesday afternoon and Wednesday morning. However, you can see with these images, valid 7 p.m. Tuesday evening, that there is a large difference in where the models place the area of low pressure. The GFS keeps the low along the Gulf Coast, whereas the ECMWF is farther north. Both have widespread precipitation across the area, but with slightly different locations for the heaviest rainfall. Here is the official rainfall forecast from the Weather Prediction Center from Tuesday morning through Thanksgiving morning. This is five to seven days out, so it will certainly change some as we get closer, but at least gives us an idea of what we might expect. It looks like through the event, the entire area should see at least an inch, with some locations receiving upwards of three inches. We have been fairly dry the past couple of months, so the soil should be able to handle this amount of rain unless it comes in a very short period of time. However, with leaves falling off the trees, there is quite a bit of debris blockage in drainage systems. This amount of rain combined with clogged drains may cause some problems, especially in some of the metro areas. Now we'll take a look at instability forecasts associated with this system. Looking at CAPE forecasts from the GFS and ECMWF models, instability will be fairly limited Wednesday afternoon and evening. And what little instability there is, is mainly across central Georgia. The ECMWF, with the surface low position further to the north, brings more instability into the area. In either case, isolated severe thunderstorms cannot be ruled out Wednesday afternoon and evening, especially across central Georgia. Let me reiterate that there is still a lot of uncertainty with this system. However, the possibility of brief wintry precipitation at the end of the event, Wednesday night and Thanksgiving morning, cannot be ruled out. Take a look again at the comparison between the GFS on the left and the ECMWF on the right, valid around midnight Thanksgiving morning. The GFS keeps some wraparound moisture in North Georgia, whereas the ECMWF pushes all the moisture out for Thanksgiving Day. This slide shows the GFS depiction of precipitation type. The little dots are rain, the squigglies are freezing rain, and the colored image is snowfall accumulation. Right now, the GFS does not bring any snowfall accumulation into North Georgia, instead keeping it in North Carolina and Tennessee. However, brief sleet or freezing rain cannot be ruled out. Again, this is just one model solution and represents the worst case scenario at this time. All right, so in summary, we have the front pushing through this weekend that might bring light rain to North Georgia. More significant, though, is the blast of Arctic air expected late in the weekend behind the front. Another system will approach the area by midweek, bringing widespread rain. Isolated severe thunderstorms will be possible, especially in central Georgia, but we'll refine this as we get closer. Brief wintry precipitation cannot be ruled out, especially across North Georgia mountains, early Thanksgiving morning. We also expect another round of cold air behind the front, but this far out it's hard to say for sure exactly what may happen. 
That said, though, because of the Thanksgiving holiday, we will be doing our next briefing on Monday. So those of you who join us then will get the latest information on the midweek system at that point. Thank you all for attending and have a happy Thanksgiving.